Sporting dog adventures run, that boy, was run. Awesome. Everything you Good need boy. is here, here under the sun. Everything you need is here under the sun. Welcome to Sporting Dog Adventures. This week we're going to give you some tips on how to keep up on grooming your lab. This is Soggy Acres Pickett's Charge, who we're going to use as our doggy model today. We also call him Picky. Picky is now 11 years old, um, and he used to hunt on the show a lot, and now he's kind of in his golden years, and we'll take him on a token hunt here and there, but pretty much he is just a house dog. So his coat at this point is really due for a groom, not a bath, but actually a grooming. It's uh, spring here, late spring in Wisconsin, and he tends to blow his coat or shed very heavily around about this time of year. It seems to be his winter coat, which was thicker, is coming out. It's dried out from you know a winter of having the heat on, so it is definitely time to do some grooming on him. I've tried just about every brush and comb that you can buy for dogs, um, from very, very expensive ones uh, to the cheaper ones, and I've never found anything that works quite as well as the method that I've come up with. Um, and I've been using this method now for a couple of years. It's super cheap, super easy, uh, and extremely effective. All you have to do is go to the dollar store and buy yourself one of those packs with the really, really cheap combs where you get like 10 combs and they're all different colors and look for the delightful plastic rat tail comb. This thing is probably worth 10 cents and I have never used anything on a lab's undercoat to clean their coat out that works half as well as this, just this. I even tried to get fancy and buy one of the metal ones that costs a little more. It did not work as well as this plastic one works. So that's all you need and a plastic bag to put in the discarded fur. It takes a while, but it's worth it. And if you're only doing it one to two times a year when they actually are shedding their coat, it's not so bad. All you have to do is start at one side of the dog. They're usually very cooperative with this because they think they're getting pet or loved and they lay down. And just work it through their coat and you will be amazed at how much dead fur you are able to extract. So I've been doing this for five seconds now, and you can see it's incredible how much you are able to take out of their coat. So you just take it, throw it in your bag, and just continue to work. Labs, I've noticed the area that I'm working in right now tends to be the worst for dead coat and dryness. It's kind of like their haunches. And then I've noticed uh, on their backs as well, like right along where their spine is, where it runs up and down. Their legs, paws, you can go over them once or twice, but there's really not that much further. There's not much that doesn't shut out on its own, but the area here is very thick and you will get a lot of dead fur. And as you can see, Pickett loves it. He thinks this is great fun. So. Yes, I know. Yes, you like this. You like this. He would let me do this for hours. We won't be at it for hours, but he would let me do it for hours. The hardest part probably is once they get so comfortable is getting them to stand up and turn around or give you a different part of their body or a different angle that you need because they're so comfy they don't want to move. I just go over the areas that are the worst again and again for the longest amount of time. Sporting Dog Adventures is presented by the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism, Boucher Automotive, Fleet Farm, Heavy Shot, Mac Outdoors, Rite Inertia Driven Shotguns, and Soggy Acres Retrievers. Hey, welcome to season nine of Sporting Dog Adventures. Please like our videos, share them, and spread the word to all your friends. It doesn't hurt them. The teeth are plastic. They're rounded on the ends. That's a handful. And to put it in perspective, if I'm doing this about twice a year, I pretty much will fill this bag by the time I'm done. That's how much dead coat you can extract. It's good for them, it helps stimulate the oils in their coats, 
so that they get that nice glossy look to their coat. It's nice for you because you will have less of those fur balls flying around on your floors. And it's a natural way to do it versus trying to feed them something or rub something on them or they really don't need any chemicals put into their body or onto their fur. They're perfectly capable of generating their own natural oils. They just need a little help as far as getting the, the dead shed out. His uh, haunch there already looks prettier. It also, it already has more shine to it. There is uh, less of that kind of chalky looking fur, which is actually the dead coat. As I'm doing it, you can actually kind of see some of the fur kind of floating into the air. There's a reason we do this on the floor. There's a reason I put on an old shirt I don't care about. <laughs> you would not want to do this on your bed. You would not want to do this on your couch. We're doing it on the floor on his pet bed and we can wash the pet bed too when we're done. You just keep taking out handfuls, handfuls and handfuls. And you can see the minute I stop, he wags because he's trying to encourage me to keep doing it because he really likes it. And that's pretty much how the process goes. When we are done, uh, I will not actually be giving him a bath. If he was dirty, dirty like muddy, uh, stinky, anything like that, you could follow it up with a bath. That would be a good time to do so. Um, you would definitely not want to bathe him first and then try to do this because all of this will go in your drain. So if you have to do a bath, do the bath after you do the clean out with the fur. I don't tend to bathe our labs unless they are really and truly dirty. You know, they swam in something, rolled in something. Uh, excess of bathing with labs just dries their coat out worse. So unless they've actually done something that warrants a bath, I stick to just the grooming like this and we don't do a full dip bath. And once we finish this side, I'll reposition him so we can do his back and his spine and then finally the other side. <laughs> You're loving this, aren't you? His eyes are closed and everything. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you found this grooming tip helpful. Catch us next week when we air our next episode. I will be white as oh my goodness, yes. Oh my goodness. Nothing beats a good pheasant hunt with my sons. We're headed to Kansas this winter. The state has some of the world's best populations of upland game, making it one of America's top bird hunting destinations. Kansas provides mixed bag opportunities and 1.5 million acres of public hunting lands. All that makes Kansas an ideal destination. The season runs from the second weekend in November to the end of January. Go to ksoutdoors.com and plan your trip today.